Hi there again. This is Brother John Allen Green, Franciscan Hermit from Johannesburg, with my reflection on the 10th Sunday in Ordinary Time, which we celebrate on the 10th of June. In today's Gospel, Jesus warns us that there is a sin that leads to death that is permanent, a sin, in other words, that blocks our redemption. There is indeed a hidden sin within us that is deadly, and not de merely because it opposes love, justice and truth, but because it is so deeply hidden in our hearts and most often portrays itself as virtue, as righteousness and as piety. Envy is the sin of fallen angels. I will not serve. I am of the light and they are of the earth. I deserve more. I am worth more. Through the devil's envy, death entered the world, and those who belong to his party experience it. Envy leads us to death, just as Cain killed Abel, and the first murder victim's blood soaked into the earth. Envy divides the world into winners and losers. Envy exalts pride and fuels greed, as it also destroys community and reviles grace. Envy is indeed to be found everywhere, in each and every family, in each and every community, and in each and every society. Envy feeds the very nature of the beast, desperately fueling the angry abyss of desire to have more, more than others, fueling our desire to be better, better than everyone else. C.S. Lewis noted that pride gets no pleasure out of having something, only out of having more of it than the next person. It is this comparison that makes us proud, the pleasure of being above the rest. Once the element of comparison is gone, so too is pride. Envy is found so often on college faculties where professors living in such limited and confined spaces, there being little economic rewards to fight over, must fight over something. So they fight over tenure, or parking, or titles, anything that suggests that one person is better than another. A professor I know, when hearing a colleague being given a prestigious history award, said, I could sell as many books as he, if I didn't have such high standards for my scholarship. I recall another academic who, upon learning of the recipients of the Nobel Prize for Chemistry, commented, Sweden is such a pitifully small country. Yes, envy is spiteful, begrudging, and envy seeks to destroy what it sees and desires of another. That is why our holy seraphic father, St. Francis, warned his brethren in his admonition number eight. The apostle affirms that no man can say the Lord Jesus but by the Holy Ghost. And there is none that doth good, no, not one. Whosoever therefore envies his brother on account of the good which the Lord says or does in him, commits a sin akin to blasphemy, because he en envies the Most High himself, who says and does all that is good. Envy also secretly delights in the misfortune of anyone who has more than you, perhaps a better job, a better marriage, a bigger house. Something goes wrong in their life, even though they may be family or friends, we quietly rejoice at their misfortune. This is rarely acknowledged as part of our nature, but it is there. Jesus exposes it for what it is. Buchner defines envy as the consuming desire to have everybody else as unsuccessful as you are. And when envy has us in its vice, we begin to be proactive in helping others along the way of failure. It's there when you catch yourself gossiping about people just to put them down, thinking that will somehow 
betray you in a better light as more caring, more loving, more astute, more whatever. Envy begrudges the Holy Spirit, and therefore envy robs us of our lives of true joy. And so a little working guide for those who have envy in their lives. Let's begin by checking the envy thermometer. Are you perhaps feeling envious of someone right now? Perhaps you have a friend who is travelling somewhere that you have long yearned to go. Perhaps you know someone who is in a new romantic relationship or who just got a great job or who is just in great physical shape. Beginning with awareness and compassion must always be our first step. Whenever I am suffering from a painful emotion, the first thing I do is to address myself with compassion. If a loved one were suffering due to envy, I'd feel compassion for him or her. So why not for myself? Acknowledge the painful emotions you're experiencing and how these emotions are robbing you of joy or robbing you of gratitude. Acknowledge your desire for the joy of the Holy Spirit. And as our self-judgment subsides, purposefully turn my will towards feeling happy for the other person, projecting images of joy in their experiences. I acknowledge that in those experiences of joy, I also find joy for myself. And so may the Lord grant you the joy and the peace that you seek.